Hey guys, this is Lisa from NYC Gal Out. Okay, I just finished watching The Real Housewife of Salt Lake City. So we're going to talk about tonight's episode as well as talk about what has been going on with a very problematic YouTuber named Tasha K. And we're going to get into it. But before we get into it, guys, don't forget to hit the like, follow, subscribe, leave me a comment, all that good jazz. It's a great free way to support me, to support your favorite content creators. And guys, if you're already watching the videos anyway, you might as well just click subscribe. The episode starts off with Heather going over to Angie's house. Angie has like an awesome view. You see like the mountains, you see like the backdrop she has like this beautiful house so angie was not in this episode a lot you only saw her in the beginning of the episode um when she filmed that scene with heather at her house so heather had came over and they were basically like rehashing what happened at the pioneer luncheon I guess everybody was in agreement that monica was a little cray cray because you know Everybody was basically telling her to like shut up. Like, you know, even like Angie got so upset, like she threw the glass, telling Monica to shut up. You know, Heather was like, sh like, shut up, let her talk. Like, and see, like, that was the thing. Like, we, there's probably so much that we didn't see, right? There's probably so much that production edited out, and we only saw a little clip of it, a little tidbit of it, because. Monica, and I've said this in my last episode when I was doing the recap of the whole season up to date, and I said one thing that I've noticed right away that Monica does, and this is like proof to me that she does have like an arrested development, that she does have like this stunt in maturity, and it probably has to do with her childhood trauma. She mocks people by mimicking them. And she does that thing that is very annoying. And Monica does it a lot, Sa does it a lot, um, and I said this in my last uh, episode when I, I recap Salt Lake City. I said, you know, even though Bryn and Sa had a very similar childhood, I felt like Bryn had the support network or the coping strategy she needed to deal with her trauma, whereas Sa didn't really seem to have it because this is also something that you see Sa do a lot on Roni. She mocks people by mimicking them. He does that. If you watch the, the season, like Sa does that multiple times. Um, and she does it especially with Jessel. And she, like, it is one of the surest signs of somebody who has had tra a traumatic childhood, who has a arrested development, a stunt maturity level. Like you really see that inner child manifest. And guys, if you if you guys have ever went to therapy or if you guys have ever done any sort of like trauma recovery, they talk so much about like journaling they talk so much about inner child you could definitely tell that that is sauce inner child you could also tell that that's monica's inner child monica is somebody who also does that a lot every single time she gets whatever she does that and it is what you see young adolescents do when they are trying to bully someone or mock someone they minimum them they like like how she does with lisa you know whenever she, lisa says something and she doesn't like it she's like stop talking to me like and you know to her she probably doesn't realize that she probably thinks so oh well i'm just being shady or i'm just being bitchy i'm just dishing it back out you're, but you're not dishing it back out. You are being a perpetual child. And I don't think, I mean, like, look, Sa has admitted that she's never went to therapy. So I don't even think Sa knows the psychological concept of an inner child. But if she went to therapy, I am sure like her therapist or her counselor, or if she's lucky enough to see a actual psychologist or psychiatrist they'll tell her about the concept of an inner child and maybe she'll have like more self-awareness and self-reflection about what she's doing and i think the same thing for um i think the same thing for monica you know they talk about that and i guess like she must have really been like unhinged because um monica it, it seemed like everybody was not seeing the same perspective that Monica was seeing. 
and when Heather and Angie was like discussing what was going on like they both acknowledged that like Monica she kind of takes it to a whole other level and that her reaction is kind of like not suitable for the situations and that she kind of seemed like you know she could dish it but she can't take it so then heather says that she's going to talk to monica because um emeritus is having a jewelry party but that angie wasn't invited so then we see a scene with Monica going over to Mary's house and she says that she's never been in that neighborhood before. And of course, Mary's house looks beautiful. And guys, I mean, I am going to 100%. I could be wrong, but I'm going with 100%. I'm going to say 100% that Mary is not coming back next season. There will not be a Mary next season. Um, she was invited to the reunion but which i was really surprised i did not think she was going to be invited to the reunion because she wasn't invited to BravoCon. but even though she was invited to the reunion i don't think that she's going to have a very big presence on the reunion i think they're going to bring her out for like a three minute clip and that's it um and i also do not anticipate her coming back next season i absolutely 100 percent do not think it again i could be wrong but i'm gonna go with 100 percent, not even 99 percent. i'm gonna go with 100 percent that she's not coming back next season they don't need her to be there they were going to so the per the producers and you know, whatever, they were going to go with the storyline arc of Jen Shaw and her getting arrested and going and being sentenced to prison and all this other stuff. But then they realized that they have so much without Jen. They had, like, Monica really is, like, she's phenomenal TV. She is, like, golden. And she bought so much of her own storyline that they they didn't even need to go with the Jen Shaw angle. They cast Monica because that was the storyline that production was going to go with. But, I mean, she delivers so good that they didn't even need that storyline, so they ditched it. That is why Monica was cast. A lot of people didn't understand why they would cast Monica because she does not fit into the cast. She lives in the small little house. And you see all these other women with their big, beautiful houses. And it, it, it was like people were wondering, like, why was she even cast? I am telling you, that is why she was cast. She was cast because production was going to go with the Jen Shaw story angle. They were going to talk about, they were, that was what they were going to build the season on. They were going to build the season around Jen Shaw getting arrested and her getting sentenced and her trial and everything. But once they got all of they're filming and they started going to the editing room and they realized all the good stuff that they had that didn't even have anything to do with Jen Shaw. They decided we don't need that Jen Shaw angle. We're just going to work. We're, we're going to edit this to what we already have. And so that is why Monica was spot on. I'm pretty sure I talked about this on the podcast but i can't remember you see this is another reason why when you you can't have too many platforms or if you do you start to like you start needing help because it's like i am a one woman team here and it's like sometimes i forget what the hell i said on the podcast or on the youtube channel or on my freaking tiktok or like on the blog or if i only said it to Lindsay but didn't say it publicly or what the hell but anyway um but that is why she was brought on because everybody says like she doesn't make sense as a casting choice but that is why she was brought on anyway i'm going with 100 percent that mary is not coming back next season you see this episode with um this episode had a scene with mary and monica and you know they're talking about lisa monica's like i don't even know what is going on um you know, I don't know what the falling out is. I think I really got under her skin because I said she was materialistic and all this other stuff. Mary's basically telling her you can't hold grudges and, you know, just apologize. And Mary's saying, you know, but it's not just Lisa. It's the both of you. Like, I, I don't think it's just her, like, because I see it going back and forth. I definitely think it's Monica. Like, 
she she probably doesn't think so but it's definitely monica um and then meredith and lisa they meet up for lunch and they talk about what's going on and i really like lisa in this scene and in this episode i just i like lisa like my favorite is angie and then i also really like um lisa i don't i don't i don't stand anyone i know there's like stands of housewives and whatever i don't stand anyone i stand myself i stand myself i stand my husband i stand my kids um you know but i am a fan not a stan a fan of like certain um certain housewives i really like lisa i really like Teresa. i really like jen aiden i really like angie um and a few others i like bethany too a lot of people have like a problem with her because she wants to do like the whole reality reckoning i don't have a problem with her <laughs> i i mean she doesn't pay my bills and neither, neither neither does nbc or bravo so like i have i don't have a problem with bethany um anyway so with that whole entire scene between meredith and lisa you know they started talking about the whole angie thing and i really liked when lisa said in her confessional you know angie she just said that like she didn't want to be friends with somebody like you but you took it to like a whole different level when you're saying that you could destroy her her family her business her her life because of rumors like that's a whole different that's not the same and like i really like that she stood up for angie i really like that she said that you know meredith trying to do a comparison is not a comparison like her saying that she doesn't want to be a she doesn't want to be friends with somebody like you it's not the same comparison as you saying that you you know secrets that could destroy her family her business her whatever and that you're alluding that like you know there is something nefarious out there so i really like that and i also really like that and um i really also like that lisa said um when they were talking about the whole monica thing and she was like look i can't she's like look i can't argue with somebody like that you know i'm, I'm not at that i'm not i'm like at a different level at, at my age right now she's like you know every single time i talk to her she says like stupid shit like oh you're ugly you need botox you have wrinkles and all this other stuff and she's like you know that's not the type of person that i am i'm not at that age anymore and i totally get that because i said the same thing like monica she's like freaking 40 so she's no spring chicken she's 40 or 41 is she 41 or 40 well anyway she's she's either 40 or 41 so honey you're not a 20 year old you're not 25 yourself you're no spring chicken you have a 18 year old daughter so even though you have an 18 year old daughter you yourself are not 18 years old so for her to go and say to lisa like you're old you're wrinkled you're this you're that and lisa in one of the episodes she actually said you're gonna get old too monica like what do you think you're not going to get old you're gonna get old too and it's like that is like if that is that it is like the 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 truth right like like so when people like that when they use that um when they use stuff like that and it actually it reminded me of something that kim d said on uh david yonta's behind the velvet rope patreon when they still were friends and she used to do the patreon on saturday with him um kim d says something like you know Teresa is the, at the age that Kim G was when she called Kim G an old lady granny when she was doing like the stripper pole in season two with Danielle Stop, and you know Teresa had called her and granny and Kim D said well look and now Teresa is the age that Kim G, Kim G was when she called her a granny and so it's like the same thing right so I when lisa said in um one of the episodes one of the previous episode when she said to monica you're 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 gonna get old too monica like it's gonna happen to you too so like and again you know 40 41 you're no spring chicken you're not in your 20s so 
Um, but I really like when Lisa said that, when she said, you know, like every single time I try to have a conversation with her, she just like, she comes up with these insults, like you're old, you're, you're, you're wrinkled, you need Botox, all this other stuff. And I also really like that Heather took Monica to task. I felt like a lot of I felt like we did not see a lot of what happened at that luncheon because producers probably were just like, okay, this is too messy and we need to edit it out because it seemed like all of the ladies were not in agreement with Monica's behavior, which makes me believe that if everybody at that table or at that luncheon including meredith and meredith does not have a good relationship with angie she's in an okay so-so place with lisa she is not in like the best place with i mean she doesn't she's she doesn't seem like she's in a very good place with Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, like just just for the fact that everybody in that group is kind of like in agreement that Monica was like a little cray cray makes me think that she really was like unhinged. And that was just a clip of what we saw. There was so much that we didn't see. And like Heather, when Heather met up with Monica, she even said, like, you know, you have to be able to take it. You dish it out, but you can't take it. And it is true. She dishes it out, but she can't take it. And then because she can't take it, she results to mocking by mimicking people. She doesn't have any comebacks. She doesn't have anything that is like one-liners or singers. Instead, what she does is she mimics. But when you are not at that maturity level, you can't come back with one-liners, right? You can't, like, you, you can't think fast enough or you don't have the maturity level enough to, like, be able to come back at somebody with like words, with something, you know, with, with, with something that is, that makes you like think, oh, okay, well, I could see it from her perspective or makes somebody who is looking at the fight like, oh, she makes a good point or, oh, okay, well, she brought that up. What do you, what's your response to that? Like, she can't debate. That's what, that's what I'm looking for. That's the word I'm looking for. She can't debate. And when you can't debate, it's like you see it a lot on online people like and you also see it a lot on political posts people that are like you know republicans or democrats that are like you know what team this or team that you know people when they go online to debate politically and they can't and they don't have facts to back up their political opinions they start insulting people right in the same situation when they cannot debate you on an intellectual level they do stuff like that you see it with Saad you see it with um with Monica I notice it a lot with Monica and so I think all the other ladies also notice it because like they did not really come to Monica's defense at all. If anything, everybody was saying to Monica that she needs to apologize to Lisa. So Meredith has a jewelry party and it's kind of like very similar to Whitney's jewelry party. And I think that's why Meredith didn't even go to Whitney's party because she was probably planning something similar. So it was like, you know, she didn't want to support Whitney's thing. Um, but anyway, so Meredith has her jewelry party. She invited everybody except for Angie. And then um, Monica, she shows up with like a pastries, Portuguese pastry. And she shows up with rum from Bermuda. And she gives it to all the ladies. And she makes up with Lisa. And Lisa says, you know, you're very good at apologizing. And I do think that Monica, she does gaslight a lot. She's very manip manipulative and that she is somebody who knows how to say the right things, how to flatter people. Um, and she she's somebody that knows to like apologize, to say the right things when she's being apologetic. And she's also somebody that knows how to flatter people. So I definitely think that she is very good at gaslighting. And look, here's the thing. She said this about her own mother, Linda. She says that Linda is kind of like Ted Bundy that, you know, cause Ted Bundy is very charismatic, but he's also like this freaking serial killer. 
And so she was basically saying that her mother is also this very charming and charismatic person to others, but that she knows how Linda truly is. And you know, the old saying that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So if anything, I feel like she probably learned from her mother. She probably learned her behavior from her mother. So I also think that Monica herself is very charismatic to others. She knows how to be apologetic. She knows how to be um, a good storyteller. She knows how to be convincing. And you see it with like how she brings up her traumas and her childhood and, you know, her her situations, her hardship. And that's kind of like that victimization that she has of herself to kind of like um, let people's guards down so that she comes off as like genuine and authentic. Here's the thing though, and here's something that I've noticed about her. So she was well aware of the fact that everything is being filmed. And she is saying that like, you know, she grew up poor, she doesn't have money, she has like, she she doesn't have the status that the other ladies does. And then she says something like, she felt guilty because she went and she bought a Louis bag because she wanted to fit in. And I kind of felt like you, you, cannot afford this Louis bag. You can't afford it, but yet you went and you bought it. So that's kind of like a poser thing to do because you knew the cameras were going to be filming. And if you felt that way, you didn't need to bring it up. You know, so like, let's say the bag was Louis Vuitton is expensive. Okay. So let, let's say that she went with a cheap bag. And when I say cheap, I'm talking about Louis cheap. So let's say she went with a cheap bag and it was $5,000. That's considered a cheap Louis bag, $5,000, okay? So you went and you bought a Louis bag for $5,000, a cheap Louis bag for $5,000. That's something that you acknowledge that you can't afford, but you bought it because you wanted to fit in with the girls. Now, why would you, that's my dog freaking wagging his damn tail. Now, why would you say that knowing that the cameras are filming unless you wanted that victimization, unless you wanted that sympathy card, unless you wanted that, because you did not have to bring it up. It wasn't like your mother said to you, oh, by the way, I noticed that there's $5,000 missing, or, oh, by the way, I noticed there's a $5,000 charge on your credit card, or, oh, by the way, you are late with the mortgage payment, your house is in foreclosure, uh, but I noticed you have a new Louis bag, or it wasn't like her mom has said, by the way, the car payment is late. You know, what's going on with that? She was sitting at a table and she bought that up herself. Why would you bring up something like that unless you wanted that recognition, that sympathy, that victimization? Because you are crying on camera, very well aware of the fact that a camera crew is filming you and you are saying, I went and I bought a Louis bag and, you know, it's, I just wanted something nice for myself because I feel like I don't fit in with these women. And I would find that genuine if you would have just said it without actually buying it. And you understand what I mean? Like if she would have just sat there and had this conversation with her mother and her daughter and, and said, you know, I feel like I don't fit in with these ladies because I, you know, they have these beautiful homes. They have these designer bags. And it's like, I go to the mall and I pass by these designer handbags that I can't afford. And it makes me feel like I don't fit in. Now that it would have been genuine. And I would have believed that. But for her to say, I bought this bag, like, why why would you go and say you bought this bag and then like in the next scene you are like trying to really hit hard at Lisa by saying that Lisa's materialistic because most people don't have a $60,000 ring and yes most people don't have a $60,000 ring but you just went and said that you bought a Louis bag because you wanted to fit in with the girls which, by the way, that is the very definition of a poser, right? A poser is somebody who does something like that. It wasn't like she was saying, oh, 
Louis is my favorite designer, or it, it was something that I really wanted all my life, or it was something that you know I really wanted and never had the money to, or I just wanted to treat myself. She didn't say any of that. What she said was that she wanted to buy something nice to fit in with the rest of the girls because she felt like she didn't fit in. Again, that is the very definition of being a poser. It wasn't like she was saying that it was her favorite designer or she loved the handbag or whatever. She literally said she bought the bag because she wanted to fit in with the rest of the girls because she wanted to have something that the other girls had. Again, the very definition of a poser. I just like noticed these things about like these reality stars. And these reality stars are not the same as actual actors or actresses, although they might think of themselves as one, but they're not. They're putting on an act for a camera, but they're not actors and actresses. They're putting on an act of how they want people to view them as, or the perspective that pe they want people to have of them but to me i feel like it just comes to a fake as fuck i think that's why i don't like monica i did like her in the beginning but then like after watching a few episodes and being caught up with the whole entire season i definitely don't like monica i definitely think she's a poser she definitely has childhood traumas and you definitely think she has like a lot of personality disorders because of the trauma i also think that she doesn't know how to I think she is emotionally stunt um, and that she probably does need a lot of therapy to work through it. It's, it's a very weird scenario with her and her mom. And then she made her mom walk back in her like pajamas when her mom dropped the car off. They do have a very toxic relationship, but I also think she's very dependent on her mother because she needed her mother to have her name on that car, which means that she probably didn't have good credit or that she probably actually that is what it means like if you need your mother to sign if you as a 40 year old woman needs your mother's name for the car it's because you don't have good credits because you have a bankruptcy or you have debt or you just have a low credit score and so it's like at 40 years old if you are still dependent on your mother like that then it is like that codependency that you do see with a lot of toxic parent child relationships you know it's like you both have resentment for each other but you're also but you also have this codependency on each other where you don't think that you were that bad of a mother and you don't think that you like like the the parent doesn't think that they were a bad parent and then the child doesn't realize um that they are like trying to be entitled by having this looming guilt over their parent like you know you were a shitty parent so therefore you need to sign you know your name onto this loan application so i could have my car or whatever the hell it is so um that was a very weird scene her mother bought her car back and then she made her mother walk back in the cold i mean it was a three minute car ride but a three minute car ride could be like a freaking 30 minute <laughs> walk and then you know whitney her friend sherry passed away from cancer she was very upset um but again lisa brought up a really excellent point in her confessional lisa said i don't know how others handled their grief i didn't know how whitney handled her grief i sent her flowers i had flowers sent to her house and me personally when i am dealing with grief or trauma i I hold it in. I don't talk about it. And, you know, I felt like Lisa was probably, she probably felt like Whitney was the same way that like, you know, Whitney probably wanted to pretend like everything was okay. And Lisa, she explained it perfectly because I understood exactly what Lisa was saying that like, you know, she didn't know how Whitney handled grief. And so she treated it the same way that she would have handled grief by not addressing it. Um, Whitney, on the other hand, obviously wanted it to be addressed because she said that Lisa was the first person that she texts in the group to let them know. I felt like Whitney was being a little bit over dramatic because Whitney kept on saying, I needed you. I wanted you. I didn't want to fucking flowers. I wanted you. And she said, oh, but you know, you were more excited about giving Heather a gift than you were about like whatever. Like, I don't know why she was putting...
this much pressure on Lisa. Like she was trying to make it seem like her and Lisa were BFFs or some shit. And it did not seem like her and Lisa were even friends like that. So I don't even know why it was put at that level. I feel like a lot of people like want Lisa to be their best friend because even like Heather, Heather was like really like so jealous of like, I, I don't know. Everybody just seems like like Lisa seems like the it girl. You know what I mean? Like, like I feel like L Lisa, I, I, maybe Jen Shaw was the it girl before. I don't know. Like I said, guys, I never watched Salt Lake City before. This is my first season watching Salt Lake City. To me, Lisa seems like the it girl. She is like the, the leader of the group because everybody seems like they want to be her friend or they want her approval or they have drama with her or whatever. And it's like, it's so weird. I don't understand why, why Whitney was feeling that way. But again, maybe Whitney was just grieving and, and she was taking her anger out on Lisa. That could also be a possibility, right? Because sometimes you just need somebody to be a target of your anger when you're that upset. And Sherry is or Sherry was her best friend. And Whitney says she's known Sherry since she was 23 years old. And she's been to all of her huge milestone events and everything. And it is really hard to lose a friendship to cancer, like, you know, to have a friend die like that. So I am sure that Whitney was very upset. But at the same time, I also felt like Whitney was putting way too much pressure and expectation on Lisa. You know, again, just from watching the season, it did not seem to me as if her and Lisa were BFFs or if, or that they were friends like that. So I felt like Lisa did the right thing. You know, she said, look, I have flowers sent to your home. I didn't know how you were going to act. That wasn't my intent that made like, you know, if you felt that way, that wasn't my intent though. And, and, but like, Whitney just would not let it go. She just would not let it go. And it, it, it just it seemed a little weird. And then, of course, Lisa was upset. So Lisa, she took her mic out and she walked out of the event. Um, and that is where the episode ends. Of course, Monica is going with the ladies to Bermuda. And next week's episode is when they're going to Bermuda, when they're actually going to Bermuda. And of course, Salt Lake City, the reunion was already filmed. So I'm really curious to see it. I love Lisa. Um, again, my two favorites are Angie and Lisa on Salt Lake City. I do feel like everybody wants to be Lisa's friend or in Lisa's good grace or whatever. That is what's been going on in Salt Lake City. And again, they're going to Bermuda in the next episode. Okay, guys, before we wrap up, I just wanted to talk very quickly about this YouTuber. Her name is Tasha K. Now, if you guys follow her, she um, she does a lot of, she's a YouTuber. She has a lot, uh, she has a large following and she does a lot of gossip, dumpster gossip about black celebrities. Now, I had no idea who the fuck she was until Carly B sued her ass and won like over four million dollars. Over four million dollars. Let me let me tell you guys something about torts. In the United States, tort laws are lawsuits, and in the United States, it is very hard, very very hard to win a defamation case especially if you are a celebrity because as a celebrity if you are a public person whether you are a politician a celebrity a singer a freaking newscaster a freaking whatever if you are a public person it is very hard to win a defamation case against in this country because of freedom of speech because people always like to say allegedly because people like to say this is my opinion etc 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 so it is very hard to prove malicious intent when you are saying something like this is my opinion that i think you look ugly so that is very hard to prove malicious intent and that is how you win these sort of defamation cases because you need to prove malicious intent so the fact that carly b was able to win a defamation case in the united states against a youtuber is really very rare it does not happen but she was able to win it because this woman tasha k she was saying that 
uh, Car- Cardi B had like STD, that she had this, she had that, and she would like come on and say she has like these receipts, which was like complete bullshit. She would say that she would had doctor bills, or she would have emails, or she would have like sources and all this other stuff. When they went to trial, she was not able to produce these actual sources. She was not able to produce these alleged hospital bills or doctor notes or whatever the fuck she was claiming and she tried to appeal it It, it's not like she was not successful she still owes she still owes cardi b that four million dollars now she's hopping on and she's saying that will smith had like some gay sexual encounter and i'm just gonna go and say that this woman is complete bullshit when you start off and you start gaining followers and you get to that level of success where you have a huge audience and this is like your legit job that you monetize on and i'm not talking about monetize where it's just like a little side money a little spending money i'm talking about at that level where she is at now where it is like a legit job where it's like no this is a paycheck like a legit paycheck that i need to claim taxes on when she when you are at that level you do i feel like a lot of these content creators they do feel like they need to produce a lot even if it's like make up shit i see this a lot and a lot of people had a hard time with me coming to the defense of like some of these housewives that are not necessarily fan favorites like melissa gorga like freaking uh marga joseph like whoever and i look i always say if if i don't have anything i'm not gonna make anything up i'm just gonna recap the shit because if i if i don't have anything to spilling tea then i'm just going to recap the episode i'm not gonna make shit up and so fucking low and that is like something that tasha k is accused of she was accused of it and cardi b accused her of it and she won over a four million dollar defamation case against her for it well now she's saying that um now she's saying that Will Smith is like fucking gay and and she has some guy on there that said that he had an encounter with Will Smith and whatever else. I don't believe that shit. I'm going to tell you why. On The Real Housewife of Potomac, she also had some alleged mistress of Chris Bassett on her show where the woman is saying that she had an abortion and all this other stuff and she had this exclusive interview and guess what happened this woman came out and wrote that she made the shit up she never met chris basket and you know what happened i'm gonna tell you what happened chris basket probably served her a fucking letter with an intent to sue and said i'm gonna sue your ass i'm gonna sue your ass for defamation i'm gonna sue your ass for freaking lying for like all this other stuff and she probably was like oh shit my ass is going to be hauled into court and yeah this tasha k lady isn't going to do shit for me when i'm facing a 10 million dollar lawsuit and that's probably why she hopped onto instagram and was like i made this complete shit up i never even met chris bassett but again this was another exclusive interview of tasha case that apparently this woman had this years-long affair with chris basket had a abortion and all this bullshit and now she has egg in her face so guys if you guys still want to support somebody that it has been exposed for like making complete bullshit i mean that's on you maybe she's entertaining i don't know i don't go onto her channel because like i don't want to give somebody like that my view so like even though i'm just one person like no you're not going to get my one view <laughs> but that's it anyway guys i'm going to hop off so uh that's it for tonight thank you guys so much for checking in with me i'll see you next time bye